Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In case you're brand new here, I'm Stav and this is my channel, She Equips Herself. Today's video is gonna be all about seven mindset shifts you need to make before you start carrying a gun. got my notes here we're gonna discuss seven things but before we get started I just wanted to let you guys know that if you have any suggestions for future videos please leave them in the comments I'm looking for ideas so if you have been wanting me to do a specific type of video or you want me to review something like a holster please let me know down in the comments another thing I wanted to let you guys know about is that in December I'm gonna be doing my 12 days of carry again this year I didn't do it last year and I did it the year before. And if you were here for that, it's basically 12 days where I film and post every single day for 12 days. And I'll do a different holster each day. So it'll be kind of like a mini vlog, but with a holster review included in it. And something that's really fun that's gonna be happening in this year's 12 Days of Carry is that I'm gonna be opening the Armed and Style Gun Girls Advent Calendar Box for the 12 days of Christmas. So let me just open this up and show you. It has 12 gift boxes with little goodies in them. I can't wait to open these and see what's inside. So every day of my 12 days of carry, I'll be opening one with you guys on camera. I recently did a giveaway of one of these on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, I don't want you to miss out on the fun. Um, follow me at She Equips Herself. I'll put my stuff right here so you can see it. And it's also linked below in the description of this video. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, let's start with a really heavy one. The first mindset shift you need to make before you start carrying a gun is thinking that your gun will be used solely as a deterrent. Just thinking that someone seeing a gun will be enough to stop them. This can be a dangerous way to think, a dangerous mindset to have because you're not prepared for actually having to use the firearm. But the truth is that in order to defend innocent life, you might have to take a life. And that can be really unsettling. Of course, nobody wants to have to be in that situation, but you have to accept that mindset that you might have to do something like that. If not, you shouldn't be carrying a gun because if you're gonna draw your gun and then not be able to use it psychologically, it can be used against you or against someone else and that's not what we want. And that can be a lot to wrap your head around. I had someone ask me the other day because I'm a Christian. It was one of my Instagram followers. She asked me how I reconcile that as a Christian. How do you reconcile possibly having to use your gun against someone when Jesus says to turn the other cheek? This is like a whole theological discussion we're not gonna get into. But my basic thoughts on this are that we have responsibilities and innocent life is to be protected. There's good and evil in this world and we have to protect ourselves from the evil in this world. Um, I remember I once had a very close friend of mine tell me that I shouldn't have to carry a gun because God, I should trust God to protect me. And by that same reasoning, I would ask that person, why do you wear a seatbelt then? <laughs> you know, we have certain responsibilities and things we're able to do. And as someone who values the life I've been given, I'm going to protect it. So accepting the fact that you might actually have to use your gun is a huge step that needs to be taken before you carry it. Because if you're the type of person to say something like, I would never be able to use a gun, you probably shouldn't be carrying one. So just make sure that you get your mind right around all that and the possibility of having to hurt or hurt someone or take someone's life. That wouldn't make it any easier if it ever happened to you but at least you'd be prepared in that situation if you had to defend your life or the life of someone else. The second mindset shift you need to make is the idea that because you've taken a safety class, you should be good to go. It's great to have that background of taking a safety class, and I think most states require that, but it's not enough if you're gonna be carrying a gun and using it for self-defense. I'd say the most important thing you need to learn before you carry a gun are the laws and when you're allowed to use lethal force versus non-lethal force so that you don't get yourself in trouble and just pull out a gun willy-nilly when the situation doesn't call for lethal force because a gun is a deadly weapon. Here in my office, I have a wall behind me that has a bunch of certificates from all different gun classes I've taken. These are my favorite ones that I'm the most proud of. I put them up here just as a reminder to myself. Along with the laws, you should also take live fire classes that teach you how to use a gun in defensive situations, not just 
shooting from a bench at the range. There's a huge difference between target shooting and self-defense shooting. Going along with that, Mac and I are currently in the middle of creating a live fire online course for you guys. So if you're enrolled in my first online course, the Armed and Confident Academy, that's more um, the lifestyle of concealed carry, how guns work, how to integrate them into your daily life. This is going to be live fire stuff where we're demoing stuff at the range, giving you drills that you can then go to the range and do them. We'll have like a worksheet after each lesson that you can take to the range to practice what you learned in the lesson. So we will have that coming up hopefully in the next month or two. I'll keep you guys updated, but we're really excited for that. It's called Practical Handgun Academy. Mac is an excellent instructor, so I'm excited to have him as a resource for you guys where you can learn from him. But learning how to shoot for a self-defense situation is really important. There's just so many classes, as you can see, that are very helpful to take. If you're in my Armed and Confident Academy, I have a checklist in there that breaks down classes that I think are like vital. Um, classes that are more advanced and then classes you can take for fun. I have like a whole checklist that breaks down classes that I think are important for you to take as someone who carries a gun. But the safety class is generally not enough. The first class I took after my safety class was a concealed carry class. It was it was called the Art of Concealed Carry in Massachusetts. So specific to my state, how to carry, what the rules are, etc. Very important. The third mindset shift you have to make is going from I know all there is to know to I don't actually know it all. And this goes into your ability to be teachable as a person. If you go into it thinking like I've grown up around guns, I know what I'm doing, then it's going to close you off to the things that you can learn. If you come into it with that tremendous ego, you're going to limit your ability to learn new things. And there's always more to learn, no matter how much you know. You could be shooting your whole entire life and still learn new things. But being open to learning new things is really important. And that's a mindset shift that's going to trickle down into all the other ones because it opens up your mind to knowledge that you might not have known before. And if you're closed off to that idea because you think you know everything, you're going to miss out. The fourth mindset shift you need to make is thinking that if I hit the bad guy or bad girl, I'll be okay. And this can be harmful in two different ways. First off, you could be thinking that if you hit them once, that's the end. Problem solved. That's it. Statistically, it's going to take more than one shot out of a handgun to stop the attack. So let's get our minds wrapped around that. It's going to take more than one shot. So be prepared mentally for that. Just because you hit them once, it's not like the movies where they get blown into the wall and problem solved. That's not the way it works in real life. The second part to that is knowing that if you engage in this situation, there's a good chance that you will also be injured. And as Mac likes to say, if you get into a fist fight, you'll probably be punched. If you get into a knife fight, you'll probably be stabbed. And if you get into a gun fight, you'll probably be shot. So be prepared for that psychologically because a lot of the times being shot might not be fatal to you physically, but it might take you out mentally. So be prepared to fight through that and definitely have some trauma gear available to you at all times. Um, carry some in your purse, carry some in your car, keep it near you because if you carry a gun and you need to use it you're going to want to have that gear available either to help other people or to possibly save your own life if you get shot because if you engage in a fight like that there's a good chance that you won't leave totally unscathed i mean hopefully you won't get hurt but chances are you probably will have some sort of injury so be prepared to deal with that both psychologically and with the appropriate gear number five I feel very strongly about this one. And that's the mindset that because I carry a gun, I can go anywhere I want now because I have a way to defend myself. When you arm yourself with a gun, you should be even more diligent about staying out of dangerous situations because you don't want to have to use it. So if you normally wouldn't walk through that certain neighborhood or go there at that certain time, just because you have a gun now doesn't mean you should be able to do those things because it wasn't safe for you to do that before. It's still not safe for you to do that now. So try to keep yourself out of those situations to avoid ever having to use your gun because I think the majority of gun owners, at least the ones that I know, don't ever want to have to use their gun. It's there if I need it. It's like a fire extinguisher. I don't want there to be a fire in my house, but if there is, I would be glad that I had a fire extinguisher available. So don't put yourself in dangerous situations on purpose just because now you have a way to defend yourself. 
stay out of those situations just the way you would before, but now knowing that you're avoiding having to use your gun. The sixth mindset shift you have to make is thinking that because now I have a gun, I don't have to carry anything else. If you've seen my other videos, you know I have strong feelings about pepper spray. It's extremely important to carry pepper spray whether you carry a gun or not. I think everyone should carry it. This is my favorite one to carry because of how easy it is to carry. It's called a POM. I have a discount code for these. I'll link it below if you want to get one. Sorry, my Massachusetts friends and New York friends, you're not allowed to have these shipped to you because our laws are the worst. But everyone else, you can get these. And pepper spray is so easy to carry. Look how small it is. It has a little clip. I can clip it into my pocket. I can clip it onto my bag. Just always have it accessible. If you carry a gun, you should have a non-lethal tool available to you as well. Because if you get into a situation where you need to defend yourself, but it's it doesn't call for lethal force, which you learn in your use of force class that you definitely should be taking, uh, you want to have a non-lethal option available. And pepper spray is just a really effective, easy thing to carry. So everyone should be carrying this, especially if you carry a gun. You don't want the gun to be the thing that you go to because you don't have another option. Do yourself a favor, carry pepper spray. Give yourself a couple options so that you have a way to deal with a lethal force situation and a non-lethal force situation. And the seventh mindset shift you need to make is thinking that if something happens, I'll know what to do and I will react perfectly. If you watch any sort of like gunfight videos or self-defense videos, um, I love active self-protection for that reason. If you check out that channel on YouTube, they break down situations like that that are caught on video so you can really see how people react. What's that saying? I'm gonna butcher it, but it says like, if you ever need to use your training, you will go back to your worst day of training. So your worst day of training, your worst day at the range is how you're gonna be if you ever need to use those skills. So don't think that you're gonna be perfect and train accordingly. Try to get better, take classes, spend time at the range shooting, improve your skills, and just be prepared for what stress is going to do to your body because you're not gonna be thinking clearly, your body's gonna be doing weird things, you're gonna be sweating, your heart's gonna be beating faster than it probably ever does. So just know that your body's not gonna be the same and you're probably not gonna be prepared to react perfectly. So. Ideally, it's best to stay out of dangerous situations, which is why awareness is so important, but sometimes we can't avoid it. So just be realistic about the way that your body is going to respond and train so that you can prepare yourself as best as you can. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you all liked it. If you have any mindset shifts you wanna share down below, please do, I love reading your comments. And don't forget to share any video requests you have down below in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Stay safe. Bye.